Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. There we go again. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to another session of Pastor Doug's virtual VIP midweek Bible study. And I got this little hair flip thing going like like Doug has. Why is yours not? Don't be messing my hair. Don't be touching my hair. You pull it down. I want you to pull it down. down. Pull it down like me. Just like that. I'm not not cool. Tell me the truth. (laughs) Now, listen, this is your pastor. Yes, sir. Have you ever pulled that down like that to make it look cool? I always push it up like that and it falls down. Oh, there it is. See, it just falls down on its own. (laughs) What it doesn't do is look cool. But it is what it is. It kind of is what it is. (laughs) Guys are really enjoying uh, talking with you guys each week, and I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, we've been in this series about uh, building your life around the kind of the basics and the premises of what God's teaching us, and really how hard it is uh, to do that. Uh, we started focusing strictly on specific areas of life in this past week. I was talking about respect, and I don't think anybody would debate any any adult, certainly adult Christian, maybe we say would debate the the seemingly lack of respect that there is in our society. Even down to the smallest thing of walking down a sidewalk and having someone just ignore you and, and you have to get out of the way. There's no like give and take. Oh, yeah. And sometimes I marvel. I mean, I'm 6'5". You know that? Catch that? I'm 6'5". Oh, five. yeah. Oh, right. Really? So I'm not that big, but I'm tall. And people like like little kids sometimes thinking, what am I, invisible? Yeah. I got to get out of your way? Yeah. But just common courtesy and respect, it, it's just lacking, like you said. I, I And it, it's sad to me to think about that. I, I can remember my dad teaching me uh, when you're walking down the street, for example, and you're with your mom or your sister or your girlfriend, wife, whatever that might be, you're to be to the traffic side of, of that mm-hmm. sidewalk. Uh, you're to open the door for mm-hmm. for well my dad said for for your girlfriend your wife your spouse whatever mom anybody mom, any female yeah. or anybody else that's what you did and you waited or you're coming out of a building and somebody or you're going and somebody's coming out you hold the door and to me it was like normal it wasn't sure. abnormal and nowadays if you do something be like, oh thank you like that's unusual Shocked. But that's not that's not the way I was taught. It, it, it's it's respect for everybody. It doesn't matter who they are at, at intersections driving. But what has happened? Really, what has happened? How how have we evolved to 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 where we are? And you know, is it is it now our children not teaching their children what's right? Is it you know, I have even noticed it, it's kind of a big deal in the Cresswell household and way more at Robbins, my wife's family, uh, etiquette around the table, how you hold your utensils. Robbins' dad used to take, he had a, they had a grandchildren trip they did every year. And it was basically training. You talk to my girls, they'll tell you about it. Pat Ball, man, where they, you had to sit a certain way, your napkin had to be in your lap, you know, you hold held your fork a certain way and All of that was taught. It was kind of respect for everybody that was Mm -hmm. around you. I don't know, Doug, what has happened to our society. I I don't know. Um, Even in a church service, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not offending anybody. You know, nobody goes to the bathroom more through the night than I do. You know, it's just the truth. That's just the truth. And so I know sometimes you got to do what you got to do, but it it seems like a lot of folks are going out to get coffee. I don't know. That's not supposed to be opened out there, is it? No. Once the service starts, the coffee service is shut down. But it's it's not not only disrespectful to me or whoever might be speaking, but to the people that you're sitting around. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I notice like from a from the platform, if I'm speaking and somebody gets up, everybody looks, and it's natural to to look and to watch. But respect is a big deal. The Bible talks a lot about respect. Look at the uh, scripture, Doug. You want to share the scripture for th- uh, sure. today? I'll put on your old man glasses and see if you can read that. <clears throat> Got you. From 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. If a person isn't loving and kind, it shows that he doesn't know God, for God is love. What's that mean? Well, to me, uh, since you've given me no time to think about this, put me on the spot. No, 
uh, if if you think or claim to be a Christian. And and that's that's a hard distinction to make because certainly you would never tell someone, oh, you're not really a Christian. Mm-hmm. But in your heart, in your head, you think you're a Christian, but your lifestyle doesn't resemble that. You're not being loving. You're not being kind. That's all God's about. So you're not really reflecting God. You're not reflecting his light and his love. Uh, you're not following Christ and his teachings. So you might really have to look in the mirror and uh, reevaluate. Are you really being a good Christian? I think I think that's what's taught in how how God has respected us with with the gifts and the abilities that he gives out and the talent that he bestows on folks, the the respect that he gives us to care enough to send his son to die so you and I can have a pathway to heaven. Uh, The support that he offers us during our daily lives, you know, to to be our friend and and companion and, and supporter and encourager, encouraging us with the gift of the Bible, with all of the scriptures and promises that are there. God has shown a great deal of respect to us as people. Uh, your individuality, letting you make your own decision, your own choice, and letting you decide your own way through life. And, you know, I'm sure he sits there like we may do sometimes with your kids and you're there, oh my goodness, what are, what are they thinking? But, you know, letting us make our mistakes and letting us come back to the mm-hmm. table for forgiveness and I'm so grateful for that. So grateful for that understanding. And I don't want this to be a a session where it's a hit job on society and how poorly uh, we respect the people around us, because I don't think that's generally the way it is. I think there's a vein of society that is is less respectful than than others. And and I think I really think it's a generational kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about the greatest generation and those that are in their 70s and 80s right now that are you know, that made this country really what it was, that served in the armed forces and did everything. And there was just this tone of respect for life and people and your neighbor and friends. I I noticed we were at the beach uh, a week or so ago, and I thought it was so odd for me. And I don't want to offend anybody who goes to the beach and anybody who does this, but this group of three uh, boys came down and they might have been in, in college or whatever. And their beach is wide open. It wasn't very crowded. Uh, there was places everywhere. They decided to camp out about 25, 30 yards away. First thing they did is turn on their radio and the boom box is blasting. Next thing you know, they're kicking a soccer ball around. And I had to say something because they used some words that I didn't think were right. My granddaughter, Sonny, and my wife and mm-hmm. my daughter are sitting there. And, you know, it, it was just, and I thought, all of this room, and you have to go right here. That's not respecting anybody, and I don't get it. I don't. I don't understand that. Um, and and I think it, I'm saddened by that. And I don't think that's at all what God is teaching us. No. If I can go way back to the uh, basic uh, respect of opening a door. You mentioned. I remember uh, when Justin was in high school teaching him about that, because I watched him uh, going out on a date with his high school girlfriend, mm-hmm. and they went out and both got in their car and drove away. And afterwards, I said, Justin, you went out with your girlfriend. You didn't open the car door for her. And his response was, it's not prom. (laughs) (laughs) Well, like only for special occasions (laughs) to do something, you know, make that kind of gesture or effort. (laughs) But the way we were taught and brought up, no, that's that's every day. And to this day, I open the door for my wife and for my mom. And uh, if nothing else, you're leading by example. People see you do that. So that's one story. The second story was a book written by two pastors uh, titled uh, Raising a Modern Day Knight. And they were, now this is going back uh, probably 25, 30 years. But they were thinking about the problems of raising their boys. They both had teenage boys at the time and doing the same thing that, that you were taught and we were taught and try to pass on. You open a door for a woman, for a lady. Well, he had his 13-year-old son who who did that and had some, I guess she was somewhat of a aggressive feminist, yelled at this, I don't need you to do that. I'm a woman. I can do it myself. And those poor boys like, Dad, what do yeah. I do? What's the right yeah. thing to do? Yeah. So they wrote this book titled Raising a Modern Day Night. And it was a short read, but it was basically in the, in the olden days, in days of nights, there was an actual system. 
you did a certain amount of training and education and you became a, I think a page was first, mm -hmm. then you advanced to a squire and there was a whole bunch of things to accomplish and learn there. And then with you, when you proved yourself, you became a knight. Mm -hmm. Well, young boys don't have anything like that anymore. You know, so you don't have a training program. And if dad didn't do it, or sadly today isn't around to do it, uh, or didn't even know about it because he wasn't taught that way, this is what we get. We get a bunch of youngsters raising each other and they don't know what this, this common courtesy is that, that we all think is important. I think that's all through life. You know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, I see it so much as a pastor. Um, folks come to me with uh, lack of uh, church background, lack of biblical information and knowledge, uh, lack of scripture understanding, um, only because they weren't taught. They they weren't shared that. If you look at the statistics to talk about the numbers of of uh, Americans that, that worship somewhere on a regular basis, those numbers are down uh, by, I think, almost 20 percent over what it was 20 years ago. And um, we're we're feeling that in our lives right now. We're feeling mm -hmm. it. We're, we're living it. And, and the question is, are we going to just continue that pathway or are we going to try to reverse that somehow? Mm -hmm. Are we going to try to regroup somehow? It's only, listen to me, it's only going to happen through your church organizations. A few weeks ago, I shared with the, the billions and billions of people that are involved in church that are Christians, that are believers. It's the most powerful group of people in the world today. We can do it. We can change it. But we have to support it. We have to get our kids in the in the churches. We have to get our kids in the youth group and our kids in the youth programs. So we have a chance to share with them. You know, there's lots of debate in our country right now. What's being taught in our schools? Well, we certainly control what's being taught in our churches. And we know what's going to happen there. And we, we talk about this on occasion to making sure that certain volume of information is shared with our children as they come through the ranks so we know what they're getting and what their information is so they know the truth and they know the facts as we see it according to the word of god but we have to make sure that we're prepared as well that we're aware that we're watching that we're pointing out the things that we direct the redirect our kids and stuff and i do it with my grandkids and i'm watching what they're doing and i talk to them about it and i make a suggestion here or there and and I make them do it the right way. I make them sit around the table the right way, to, you know, the, to put their napkin in their lap the right way. And how about, how about chewing your few food with your mouth closed? That's probably a good idea. Some of you guys might want to try it. <laughs> I don't know if you know. I noticed that stuff. Do you oh, notice yes. that? Sure. I notice that kind of stuff. And I don't want this to be a downer. But but for me, I feel so much better about life knowing that how I was raised and how we were taught. We had Father's Day just happen. And, and to be thankful for who my dad was and what he represented to me in my life. And I know many of you feel the same way about your parents. Or, or then again, maybe there's some of you that really don't. And, and I honestly, I feel bad for you because I know what it was for a blessing for me to have somebody that was so strong, yet so tender, so, so loving and kind and gentle, but so powerful at the same time. He was a good guy. And, and God represents that in my life now. He's that support that I need. He's that strength that I need. He's that confidence uh, behind us that, that we need to have. And I think you should share that as well. Don't ever slack on the respect, the respect training for the kids or grandkids. Always point it out. Let them know that respect does matter in this world and it is a big deal. Now, you said to me before, don't touch my hair. What would you do if I did? I was going to, uh, this is what I was going to do. I was going to say, Doug, look at that picture. As soon as you looked, I was going to reach up and pull that down there so it looked really nice. What would you do about that? I wouldn't do anything. It would just be a little uncomfortable <laughs> for me. That's all. My wife messes with my hair. Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> God bless you guys. Thanks for joining us. I hope to see you on Sunday. Uh, some new news that we're, we're planning our church picnic for this summer. Uh, going to be, what would you guys, where'd you come up with any roughly July, August, something like Either that? Either the end of August, or, excuse me, end of July or August, depending on dates available at the uh, Grove. So we'll okay. let you know. We're going to try to get back out there to Deer Lake and everything. Hope you guys can join us. God bless you. Thanks for being a part of our midweek study and uh, hope to see you Sunday morning. Take care.